half an inning behind schedule. I do apologize. Had an issue with a place I'm staying at with the restaurant, and so I had to deal with the manager and a worker to come over and look at it before I left. So early lead ended up evaporating on me, so I apologize for getting a late start here. All you missed in the first inning was a fly out by first, a strikeout, then a ground out for Roth. They were unable to plate and move the runners around base. Valiant here with the leadoff walk. It is one of four games on tap today for Prep Nation TV coverage for the 2024 Ram Classic. Day two action. Each game will have its own feed. That way we can generate highlight reels in between. Um, through the night, we did post offensive and defensive plays of the game. And so all of those clips are now up. In addition, since we had an encoder glitch to start the game for the initial Roth game, and then the Wright City game had an error on the scoreboard, and we ended up actually signing off at the end of the sixth inning instead of the seventh inning. We went ahead and did master clips for both of those games so that you could get the extra four in 25 minutes. If you want to watch it, just start to finish. A little bit windier day, kind of overcast, much cooler. Yesterday was an absolute get out the boat and get it ready for the lake kind of day. It was absolutely gorgeous here, about 67 degrees or so. Format remains the same today, except for two punch out games starting the games. It will feature losers from yesterday's games, recaps, Rattan victorious over Allen, 10-0 through four innings. Worcester held on to defeat Roth 6-3 after jumping out to a 6-0 lead through the top of the third. Silo in a pitcher's duel, difference being a double and a home run, defeated Tupelo 3-0. And then Wright City shut out Valiant last evening 9-0 and a homer fest for the Lumberjacks. Two RBI and three RBI blasts going over the wall. Valiant and Roth both fighting to stay alive for tomorrow's noon matchup for the fifth place game. So the way that the pairings work is it'll be the winner of Roth Valiant and Alan Tupelo meeting tomorrow at noon for fifth. Those losers are eliminated today and their tournament action will end. Our winner's bracket games coming up at approximately 4 and 6 p.m. today will feature Worcester versus Wright City and then a Class A Fall State Championship game rematch between the host Rattan Rams and the Silo Rebels. We're going to go a little bit lighter on the mic to try to help with some of the wind sound. I apologize for the mesh net. It is absolutely flexing on us pretty much nonstop, so you're going to get more of an up-close look because the netting is blowing toward the camera. So I'll do my best to kind of just kind of keep a foot or a hand on it so that it tries to stay a little bit more stationary here. Throws down the sack bunt. Nobody at first base. Infield bunt single for Valiant. That's exactly the way you're supposed to do it if you're the offense and not supposed to do it if you are the defense. Bases loaded here for the Bulldogs in the bottom of the first inning. Gets him on the swing and a miss. If we have any changes for game times and starts, we'll do our best to let you know. We'll take the feed down, generate the highlight reel, and then usually we'll crank it up about five or ten minutes, give or take, before the game starts again. The times that we're working on today are 12 to 4 and 6. Anything after the 12 game can be off. Another swing and a miss, 0-2 kit, which count. Woo! Hot shot into the dugout, man. He just about took two or three different players with him. If they weren't awake, they are now. Evens up the pitch count now on the high and outside pitch, 2-2. Two -two. And now 
make it full count. So after two consecutive strikes and then a foul ball, three balls in a row for Roth here on the verge of walking in a run. Put in play, RBI. They're gonna send two. And it is a two RBI single, heads over to third. Drops the ball, base runner will advance to second. And the errors continue for the Roth Tigers as they give up two runs earned and then two base runners advance. Kind of had him quick on a throw. However, the pitcher was closer to the bag on the angle than the third baseman. So it probably would have been better to fake the throw to third and then just fire over to second or shortstop. So huge first inning, ball goes foul. Valiant unable to score last evening against Wright City. They've already put two runs up here. Is it top of the second, not bottom of the first? Okay, Roth is the home team. I've got a correction on the scoreboard and panel. <laughs> so flip-flop the scoreboard coming up. All right, easy fix on the panel there, so we're going to flip-flop that. This is the top of the second inning. Valiant is the visiting team, Roth, again, back-to-back -back days, home team. And the strikeout on the swing and a miss. Thank our coverage sponsors for today's live stream action. First State Bank and Tidwell Sports, etc. Just a reminder at the conclusion of the game, we will have a highlight reel. We'll do our best to, if we get some run rules, we'll do our best to get the offensive and defensive plays up sooner than late night. However, we will do our best to make sure that we get the streams on point each day. A little bit of wind resistance here today. Otherwise, just a little overcast. So don't anticipate any rain yet. There's a massive wide altitude the, the sky. However, I don't see really any rain clouds in formation. So hopefully we'll have no rain and no delays today. And another walk. So early on, Tiger struggling with ball control. Valiant on the verge of pretty much plating every batter. They're going to be pretty soon back to their lineup again, just in one inning alone. Base is loaded for the second time for the Bulldogs. It's going to fall for a single. One hops and drops. Best play is to go to third, misses it. Cutoff guy comes in, leaves it, watches it go. Wow, it has just been one of those kind of innings for the Roth Tigers, folks. Had the third baseman just shuffled to third, and the pitcher runs up to be cutoff man. Could have fired over a shot because he really got a late start heading to third not knowing if that's going to be a fly out if he needed to tag up or just run. Bases remain loaded for the fourth time now. So about the only positive from that is, is another run comes in, but it wasn't more than another run. That one would have scored too. 
So Roth dodges a bullet there. I'll do our best to keep track of our actual pitch count. We've got a glitch going on with the scoreboard today. I'm not sure if they're just going to replace the part or when it might be back up again. So the score will be 3-0. And obviously, just zero balls showing up on the scoreboard, not correct. So back-to-back -back balls on the count. I believe we have a 2-2. Two -two. Fouls it off over the dugout. And now I believe it's full count. Yep, 3 2. Pops it in foul. It's going to hook and go just over the line. Oh, catcher, pitcher combo. It actually came close and pulled back inside the gate. Drive one, bro. A lot of good stuff right here, baby. Nice hustle for the pitcher, man. He covered a lot of real estate to get over there on that ball. Full count resumes 3 2. And the walk will split another run for Valiant, and it is 4 0 for the Bulldogs. Bases again remain loaded. Head coach Derek Collins will head to the mound. We may be looking at a pitching change here in the top of the second. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic. Wicked rip. RBI scores one. They're going to hold them. Bases will remain loaded. And it's like a repeat, redo, and whatever other kind of re you're wanting to include. Valiant is rolling here now. 5-0 lead over Roth, and we're still on the top of the second. I don't believe there's any outs, is there? There is one out. All right. Well, that's the only saving grace for Roth is you can turn two here easy. Any kind of a forced tag is in play. Just a typical amount of errors, miscues on placement, ball relay, and perfectly placed balls being hit right now by Valiant. So here's a perfect example. Go home, drops the ball, fielder's error, another error, scores two runs, and that is exactly, oh my gosh, he's going to score a third run. So unless they correct a foul ball call, which is what the fans want called, that is an E1 twice, an E1 on the fielding error, an E1 on the throwing error. And then that ball goes all the way over to, it looks like a pitching kind of perch over in right field. Well, they may have a batting cage or a pitching cage for taking batting instructions over there. I mean, that ball literally goes all the way to the wall on the throw. Absolutely brutal inning so far for Ralph. And they're going to get another run here on the RBI, sack RBI. So make it 9-0 Valiant. That'll be two outs now. Scoreboard is back up and running, folks. So we got an accurate tally. We'll have a 0-0 batter coming up with two down now for the Bulldogs. Base is finally cleared. Foul 
fouls it off. Just a reminder, run rules in effect for the tournament. 12 runs after three innings are complete or one team bats. 10-4 and eight after five. In this particular case, Roth will get the at-bat in the prospective third, fourth, or fifth inning. Talk about a roll reversal here for Valiant. Last night, they're on the wrong end of a 9-0 loss. Today, they're a 9-0 leader. And it is a strikeout. All right, so the Tigers will head to the dugout. They need to get cooking here quick. You're watching Prep Nation TV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Ram Baseball Classic at Rattan High School. seems to have subsided now here early on. Muddy pitch on its way, 3-2. In play to the third baseman, snags it, fires over, 5-3 on the ground out, one down. Watch out, 
And strike out, two down. And it is a strikeout. Your score through two innings, Valiant 9, Roth 0. You're watching PNTV coverage of the 2024 Rattan Baseball Classic. All Valiant so far, top of third coming up, Bulldogs up to bat. change for the Tigers here in the top of the third. Good job. Hey, there you go. 
flies out to right field in foul territory. Save it first. It was going to be a close throw. It was going to be a close, contested base path, but Bobbles drops the ball, can't grab it. And Valiant pretty much picks up where they left off in the second inning here in the top of the third. Turner will still in safe third. on first and third. First, full count is the call. And a strikeout. Exactly what Roth wanted to see there. To having the runner on first, he is out. Chopper is going to stay in play. Snags at first baseman, gets the out. Well, Roth stops any further damage here. They'll need to get cranking here soon. Otherwise, we will be heading into run rule territory in the fourth inning. Tigers coming up to bat. Bottom of the third inning, you're watching PNTV. Okay. 
can go classic invert, you can go both of them at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. well Short stop grabs it, fires, and on the point, <clears throat> six three on the ground down. Foul makes it an 0-2 pitch counter. unable to get anything going here in the bottom of the third as well. But at the top of the fourth with the Bulldogs coming up to bat, it's Valiant 9, Roth 0. You're watching PNTV. Ow. 
I don't know if anybody that's watching the game is a big <coughs> March Madness fan or not, but it was pandemonium last night. Three of the four games played all ended up in upsets. Started with Clemson 77-72 over Arizona, Alabama 89-87 over North Carolina, and Illinois 72-69 over Iowa State. The only favorite that won, UConn 82-52 over San Diego State. More games on tap tonight, NC State, Marquette, Gonzaga, Purdue, Duke, Houston, and Creighton, Tennessee. Next game up that will start at approximately 2 p.m. will be Allen and Tupelo. <laughs> Should this result hold, and barring a massive rally by Roth, Tigers will be eliminated from the tournament. Valiant will punch their ticket to tomorrow's noon game for the fifth place game. And they will await the winner of Allen and Tupelo. Based upon the bracket pairings and the way things went, I don't think we've really seen any upsets in the tournament so far. Silo being the 3A class over Class B Tupelo, not a surprise. Blooper to short, easy out. Valiant and Silo into the tournament, the only 3A teams in play. So I guess in theory you could say that based upon A versus 3A, the Riot City game was a, an upset, but I believe Riot City did have the better team. So I think pretty much goes according to script yesterday. We'll see if there's any upsets today. Our four o'clock game will be Worcester versus Wright City. Winner of that advances to the championship game to meet either Rattan or Silo, and then the losers of those two evening games will play for third tomorrow. Throws down the bunt, one hands it, can't get him, beats it out. Infield bunt is successful. Base runners, totally different body language for Valiant. Aggressive, fast, confident. Second consecutive inning that they've been able to get a bunt to fall for a hit. Other inception was a error that allowed actually him to advance from first all the way to third on an infield bunt. I've covered almost probably 3,900 games, give or take, since 2015, and still the craziest play I've ever seen. Saw a kid throw down a sack bun in a situational at bat with the bases loaded. There was one out. Goal was just to score a run to stay in the game. Throws down the bunt. Pitcher runs to get it. Fires to first. Overthrows. Ricochets along the wall. Run scores. Right fielder grabs the ball. Throws it to second. Overthrows. It rolls over to left field line. Another run scores. Left fielder comes in, throws it to home plate, ricochets off the wall. The third run scores. And before the first baseman can get the ball and throw it back to the pitcher. And in the park, grand slam, sack bun. Back-to-back -back balls, now 2-0 on the pitch count. Base runner goes, moot point, he'll be in safe. It's a walk anyway. So once again, Bulldogs have two on here, one out. In the top of the fourth inning, they need one run here and then to hold Roff scoreless in the bottom of the fourth to be victors over run rule territory 12-3-10-4-8-5 format. 
Going to go to third base. Looks, fires, throws. One hops it, drops it, and uh, runs scores. And there is your extra run that they wanted and got. Well, the malaise continues for Roth. Looks to be a standard routine 5-3 ground out. One hops the throw. First baseman can't snag it and keep it. Base runner safe at first. Advances. That one goes foul. Three teams hit home runs yesterday. One team hit two home runs. Worcester with a blast over left field wall. Silo with a solo blast over left field wall. And then Wright City, a two RBI and a three RBI home run, both over center field, left to center field areas. Kind of over by the tree with the purple banner there. Clips it. Nicely done by the shortstop. Read that one perfectly, already rotating the hips and moving backwards. Easy catch, two down. Ball comes in on the breaker. It is low and in the dirt. <laughs> Chopper to first. That'll be a three unassist tags. We'll head to the bottom of the fourth inning. Here's the long and short. Tigers need to score at least one run to stave off a run rule. And should they be able to do that, then they will have to score a, an additional two runs in the fifth to stave off a run rule, plus not give up any additional runs. I half expect half of the viewers to report that they're seasick from just the net effect. I would like to tell you that this is a, an experiment we're conducting here, but two days in a row could not be any different. Yesterday, hardly a breeze till the sun started going down. It was actually, you know, very warm. Today, pretty much a wide out cloud filled sky and wind trying to really get cranked up here. It's been a tough two seasons for Roth, absolute perennial powerhouse. At one time, Roth had won seven out of eight potential state tournaments. And 
that came with a with an asterisk that ended up technically being six of eight due to COVID being canceled. They were the heavy favorites to win that one, so that's why I say seven of eight. <coughs> and then a passing of the torch took place <coughs> to Fort Cobb Broxton, who slays their giant. And then since then, with Ed Simon and Danny Baldridge both leaving. Roff in uncharted territory. It's been a long time since Roff hasn't been a state champion in Class B or A, for that matter, and at least a, a finalist, runner-up type thing. Tough year last year. Roff, though, however, did rally through the last part of the season. Played a really tough schedule that was pretty much stacked with A to, you know, three, four A schools typically, but even though it was for fall, all the games were classified for A that they played above their B classification. But they came on, made it to the state quarterfinals, lost a tough game to Kiowa 1-0. This year though, the Malays has continued very difficult start to the season again. They did jump out to a pretty decent record and then just kind of ran into a, a buzzsaw here lately with scheduling and just bad matchups. Ian high and tight, safe at first. I've long since contended that basketball has three seasons. The season you play when your players are still playing football before the Christmas break, wild throw at first and safe at second. I would have just pushed it, I'd have kept going. Then your season before the tournaments conclude and then obviously playoffs. Baseball is a different bird. You can literally play five weeks of invitationals, six weeks of invitationals. The bottom line is is that the season in baseball begins when district playoffs are, are beginning. That's when the season really truly begins. Everybody is pretty much either trying to get busy through March and April because of rain delays and cancellations, or they're waiting on basketball players to be available and then to get the necessary practice and repetition in. And so I've long since contended with baseball. There really is two parts to the season. It's just that simple. Building your team and getting them conditioned and into the rhythm and the schedule. And then what you do after playoffs begin. It's just that simple. If you have a bad start to the first part of the season, you don't always make it. But what you do in districts and then regionals and state is your baseball season so plenty of opportunities for both valiant and roth to improve as they continue to test themselves in invitational tournaments however it has been a tough day at the job here today for roth i'd like to once again thank our coverage sponsors for today's live stream video highlights and plays of the game first day bank and tidwell sports Fires back, would have had him probably had he not dropped the ball. Tigers down to their final two outs. However, they do have a base runner in scoring position now at second. Should they be able to get a hit or a wild pitch, some combination thereof? Fouls it off, evens up the count. <laughs> Chopper to pitcher, fielder's choice. He's going to tag him or throw him out. So we're going to have a squeeze going on here. So it's a 1-6-5 so far in play. 1-6 oh, yeah. tag out. And Roff just cannot catch a break. They lose the base runner. However, they do replace him at second. Two down. Tigers now down to their final out. Well, that's just textbook. You, you force the base runner to commit. He overcommitted. And battle of speed with him trying to stop and start. Easy tagging. So nicely done by the Valiant Bulldogs.
Ian safe at second. It's a short stop. Maybe it. Six three ground out, and that'll do it. Your final score: Valiant ten, Roth zero. Thank you for watching Prep Nation TV coverage. We will have a bit of a delay here. We've got a full hour before the next game is scheduled to start, so I don't see any reason why they won't start it a little bit early if both teams are ready. Um, I already see Allen here at the ballpark. I believe that Tupelo has been here for quite a while as well. So if we have an early start, I will get the stream up about five minutes before it begins. So if you're wanting to tune in again, be looking at anywhere from about 145 on. Thank you for tuning in. Final score, Valiant 10, Roth 0. And it is painful to see how bad Roth has become. The hardest part is, is they're no longer even setting positions for throw-ins, tie-ins. Just out of spot. Covered a turn the week before last. Short stop. He fired over just a routine ground out. First baseman tried to scoop it, didn't. Just went like this. The ball rolled to the dugout. So the kid goes from first to second. First baseman never moves. Didn't go to the fence to get the ball. Second baseman has to run over and get it, so the kid keeps running, goes all the way to third. He tries to hit a first base, but man, he didn't get me out, so he would go get the ball. <laughs> would have been put on the bench for the rest of the year.
You don't think so?
in a holster. Holding my hand. Yeah, I know. I could probably stick it in there, but it's easier to have it right there. That way, you don't have to find it. It can fall all the way out. I don't want it to fall all the way out. If it falls out, then it fall on the ground, and then it might, you know, somebody might pick it up. That wouldn't be good, would it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know, and I like this gun. Because it's mine. Because I've done some special stuff to it. So I just added things to it. Like some trigger stuff.
How's my good friend doing today? What's Wendy watching all kind of games today or what? Oh yeah. You just going to sit right here and watch, huh? Well, I got to go in the room because my daughter's playing at the school. It's Yeah, it's over. Yeah, it's over. And I got to make it. I want to come back and watch at least one of them championship rounds. Okay, yeah, them. <coughs>